Well, on today's episode of the old Firebird Restoration Station, we got the spindle mounted up last go around with the new springs in there and everything all happy, but we need to get all these goodies put back on there so that way I can get a wheel on this car on both sides. We got a caliper in there, a dust shield, and steering arm, etc. all the bits and pieces. If you have any kind of, oh, any kind of curiosity how that goes together, stay tuned because we need to get those wheels back on this car so we can roll it back under that body once we get this thing to run. I've got the parts laid out here. Dust shield, caliper mounting bracket, steering arm, and here's your bolts. There's actually three bolts that hold the caliper bracket and the dust shield all sit together because that one's sitting right here in the bracket. Um, so you one, two, three. There's your three holes. Now you'll see one of these bolts is slightly longer. It's supposed to be because it has to go through not only the steering arm, but it also has to go through the caliper bracket here just the same. So we're gonna obviously then the longer bolt then goes to the rear hole for the caliper mounting bracket. And then we'll get the steering arm, dust shield, all put into place. All right, well, let's get started. The caliper bracket is the first in the pile. Then the dust shield goes on. So what we can do, the longer bolt, use it for like a little alignment pin to kind of help. That's an extra helping hand. Throw that guy up into place. Oops. That bolt here at the 12 o'clock spot. Get that started in. Now, once you get a torch, you bend those little tabs over to actually help keep the bolt locked into place. And then the steering arm comes onto the back side. Now, if you remove your drum brake going to disc brake conversion, you have to recycle that steering arm. That's the only thing you need to keep off the old system. So. Don't get in a big hurry and pitch that thing because you need to remove and reuse that steering arm. I've taken this one off, obviously, and sandblasted and painted it. Um, but just to let you know, that does not come in the kits. I believe they're available for purchase, but the ones on your drum brake ones work just the same. And we just snug these things up. Of course, you've got like the uh, windstorm from heck right now going on outside i got like, like 30 40 mile wind wind gusts blowing leaves blowing stuff everywhere here in the garage that's really nice air conditioning it's like 65 degrees so it's really nice out considering the time of year it is I'm not complaining i'll get one here snugged up Use the weight of the car and pick up on it instead. It's a little warm. There we go. Now we'll bend that tab down and that'll hold the bolt from coming loose. close-up of that tab being bent over now it depends on where you clock it you can't bend both of them because of their position but you get the one lined up so all you gotta do just to bend the one over now next thing we're gonna work on here we'll do some bearing packing here we gotta pack the inner outer bearing and we'll get the rotor put into place there and then we'll stab the caliper on we're gonna go to bearing packing 101 there's your bearing greaser wheel bearing um, get you some of that. Now there's actually a bearing packing tool you can use, but my dad learned me this years ago, but you basically, see I just kind of got a little bit here on the edge. You just keep literally cutting off a little bit, pushing it through, packing it through the bearing. And then eventually what'll happen is you'll see these little starts to pop out of the top. You just keep working it through. It'll kind of like a, I guess it's a Play-Doh factory in a sense. Uh, I'm starting to see it poke through here now. But you gotta do this to get the bearing packed all the way on the inside you don't just slide out of the grease on the outside of the bearing you need to get it on the inside between the rollers and you see here poking up in the bearing that's good i just keep going around in a circle and until you get the whole bearing packed now you can buy one of those fancy tools it does a real nice job uh, that seems to work pretty good i have one somewhere but um i never keep it full of grease because it's always empty so I tend to go back to the good old fashioned way here and just keep working it in a circle. So same idea, you got four bearings to pack. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. 
and we'll get back to putting this thing together. But you can see here how it's poking through. That's what you want to see. Then that point, then that whole section is good. Just keep working it in a circle. All right, bearings pack kind of this dropped it there, and the road of the race is already installed in these. So the next step is just drive the seal in. And of course, find the biggest hammer you can possibly find. Flip the rotor up into place on the spindle, and we'll put the outer bearing on it. All right, and then the outer bearing for the self-explanatory. And there's a washer with a indexing key. on that. Now there's several thoughts and procedures and how to's again. I like to say a lot the right way, the wrong way, and how I do it. I think I need to make that t-shirt up the right way, the wrong way, and how I do it. Might actually sell pretty good because maybe I have their own opinion on that. Over to you. Um, basically, I just keep running the nut down. I want to preload the bearings. Now, these are new bearings, new races, new spindle, new rotor. So, they may take a couple tries. But basically, I'm going to keep spinning the rotor. That helped get all the rollers index slid out the end of their race inside their cages. And I kind of back the nut off, snug it back down. And you'll finally feel when it kind of gets a little bit of drag on the bearings. And I'll go ahead and back it off again and keep going. And I'm gonna go a little probably a little too snug once or twice just to make sure that thing is seated because you got everything new. The bearing race may not be seated in the rotor, inside or outside. Brand new bearing is gonna seat into the face of the new bearing races. I mean, it's too many variables here, so um, there's a good chance it may not be a bad idea once you drove this car around for a while. Uh, recheck the bearing preload on here. Uh, there's a good chance that it may have broke in a little bit and maybe a little bit loose. So, I'll say that's feeling pretty good. Right about there. Then drop your cotter pen in. Yeah, that feels good. I think that'll work. I'll put my cotter pen in, lock it off, put a dust cap on. All right. Of course, this one, this one came with the kit, but uh, it's a bit excessive, I think, as for length. But I at work. There is the dust kit. Now, last part of the bearing installation process. Yeah, go ahead and smack this. Hopefully, put this dust cap on here. Again, using the biggest hammer possible. That seems to work pretty good. Definitely overkill. There you go. Okay, caliper installation time. Just go ahead and pick it up, throw it on the car, right? Well, no, I want to show you a little something, something first. On this inside pad, there should be this little spring clip here. That's a must if you don't want the brakes to squeak. Um, a squeak is just a vibration from a component allowed to move around. So the brake pad needs to be secured into place if you don't want it to squeak. So the outside pad has the same measures in a sense, but these little tabs here and here, I was taught you actually hit these lightly with a hammer. In this case, our big hammer probably worked great until it sits tightly in the caliper itself. It shouldn't flop around in there. It should be nice and tight and secure. So if it's moving around like this one is, well, we need to bend those little tabs down a little bit. So check this out. Put it like this. Doesn't take much. Just a couple hits. Try it again. Uh, not quite yet. I got a little bit of drag, but we're not there yet. There we go. Now it actually kind of snaps into place. Now I can take this caliper. Look, that inside or outside pad stays where it's supposed to stay. That should be good enough now. So now, yes, as simple as flipping it up into place, putting the bolts in it.
Okay, next step is go ahead and slap the brake hose on. Goes from the caliper to the bracket on the frame. I may even got the line ran here for the passenger side because, well, you didn't watch that video, you should probably check it out. But always run that first when assembling your subframe. Makes your life a whole lot easier. Right, nonetheless, you got a little banjo bolt, copper washers, they get stacked or sandwiched in there. Then you go ahead and install the brake hose onto the caliper. Make sure it's clean. I want to get that looped into place. There's actually a clip that goes on here. I'll have to go find that, but you get the idea. It's not good up, put the line up, and this side is done. Well, there we go. Both sides all done. Brake calipers installed, spindles done, all the bearings taken care of and preloaded and set. Uh, I've had a little drink here of the uh, Fruit Quake. Um, I always try these different Mountain Dews, and I don't think I like this. It kind of reminds me like when you go to the Christmas tree store, like the holiday shops, that spicy, fruity smell is what exactly what it tastes like. And it's um. Not that great, so I'll have to stick the orange Mountain Dew. But anyway, keep plugging along, get this thing put together. Hope to get this thing running here soon. We'll get a video on that. And, of course, anything else you'd like to see, let me know just the same. But uh, I'm going to finish getting this down, I suppose, and then get the camera back out here and show you some more of the good stuff, and we'll catch you then.